uh, DBN Nation, uh, of course. Support DBN Nation. You're hearing it from Floyd Money Mayweather. What's going on? This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. It's Terrence Crawford, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Man, shout out to Dante's Boxing Nation. What's going on, Dante, Dante Nation uh, fans? Bo Mack. Bo Mack, Terrence Crawford training right here. Watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. Y'all hear it. Y'all hear it. Y'all hear it. Dante's Boxing. <laughs> My man. Oh, I got this God. on video, Tim. I'm putting I it up. I swear, oh, man. man. This is Dante Williams. Are you watching Dante's 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 Boxing Nation? What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dante's Boxing Nation. This is AK. Go ahead and visit AshKickIt.com. And while you at it, subscribe below and let's get straight to it. So there's a mega fight in the horizon between. The pound for pound number one, which is Terrence Crawford, and another pound for pound fighter in the welterweight division, which a lot of people are saying he's the number one welterweight in the division, which is Errol Spence. This is our Pacquiao versus Floyd type of fight. This is our Hearn versus Leonard type of fight. Terrence Crawford remind me more of Penel Whitaker with power. A lot of people say, oh, his defense ain't as sweet as Penel Whitaker's, however, he do have more pop and he switched stands. Meanwhile, Errol Spence is like Sugar Ray Leonard. He has that type of personality. And people make that comparison because he's a natural combination puncher like Leonard and he uses his jab like Leonard. However, he fights in the southpaw position, but he's more fundamental and Leonard used to have a more upper body movement, in my opinion. Now, there isn't just empty talks of this mega fight for no reason. The reason why people are so hyped about this fight because this is as skillful as it gets in their prime and at the same time being most avoided. Errol Spence is already known as the most avoided fighter probably in boxing today and especially in the welterweight division, just not by Terrence Crawford. In the meantime, Terrence Crawford is avoided himself by the top dogs. Even though he did unify 140, he was the best 135 pounder when he was at that weight competing. But how he got to the 147 pound division without fighting Mikey Garcia and Lomachenko is questionable. Think about it. I mean, at 140, Crawford was the best pound for pound number one fighter after Andre Ward retired, right? And at 140, he was the number one fighter in that division as well. And he unified the division. So Mikey Garcia and Adrian Barnum fought for no belt at 140. But the winner never mentioned fighting Terrence Crawford. And Mikey Garcia won. And he never mentioned Terrence Crawford. He mentioned to fight Earl. But he never mentioned Crawford. Matter of fact, he said that Crawford is a good fighter. And he actually, he the one who told top rank about Terrence Crawford back in the day but at the end of the day he didn't want to get into the ring with him because he was in the same division and Terrence Crawford beat him in the amateurs once but recently he came out and said that he don't like Terrence Crawford because he moves around too much it's not going to be a fight he more interested in an Errol Spence fight which is cool but I doubt the Errol Spence fight will happen too is it empty talk? Because at the end of the day, he's competing at 135 versus Easter, which is still a good fight. But at the end of the day, he's saying that at the end of the year, he willing to move up and fight Earl. That's his goal. But he still wants the Lomachenko fight and how he's going to get the Lomachenko fight by the end of the year and fight Earl. I don't see that happening. I don't even see... Him fighting Loma by the end of the year because Loma just came off a surgery on his right shoulder. But my whole point is, Mikey Garcia is a top fighter and he's saying he don't even like Terrence Crawford style. Why? Possibly because he sees something that he don't like, which is a puzzle that he can't solve. So because of that, Terrence Crawford versus Mikey Garcia talk never took place. And Lomachenko... He's fighting at 135 right now, and Terrence Crawford not too long ago just moved up to 140. And now he just moved up to 147, so 
that fight could have happened, but Bob Arum didn't seem interested. That he more interested in making Loma versus Pacquiao at a catch weight at 138 or 135. But Bob never mentioned a fight or tried to make a fight between Loma and Terence Crawford at a catch weight or a fight in general. And Terence Crawford took a page out of Andre Ward book where he came out, called out everybody from 135 to 140 to 147, below his division, in his division, above his division, from Errol to Keith Thurman to Lomachenko to Mikey. He was yelling out free smoke like he was Errol, while Errol was doing the same thing on 147. So Terence Crawford, he did that for a reason, because Bob Arum out here making comments saying, hey, Lomachenko, the greatest fighter ever since Muhammad Ali. Like I said, he said the same thing about Floyd when he was promoting Floyd. Even though he has a fighter, the closest thing to Floyd, the pound for pound number one fighter right now is just is Terrence Crawford. So he could have said the same thing about Terrence Crawford, but he chose not to. He's focusing more on Lomachenko. He, so he said, hey, I'll fight Lomachenko too. Make it happen. If he's such a great fighter. But no, they wanted to move Terrence Crawford away from Lomachenko. Just like they did Andre Ward when he tried to fight Triple G. They were like, you know what? Forget you trying to tri- fight Triple G. HBO told him, hey, move up and fight Kovalev. Another monster, which he did, and he ended up knocking out to claim his pound for pound status as number one pound for pound in the world. Even though he already was, but at the end of the day, that's how he had to prove it again. You know, and Triple G ended up ducking Andre Ward. But like I said, they ended up moving away Terrence Crawford from Lomachenko now. And Mikey Garcia, some way, somehow, there was no pressure of him fighting Terrence Crawford, even though they fought the same division at one point. And now he's at 147. Errol Spence is being avoided by Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman didn't just disappear out of the scene for no reason. Matter of fact, he did it for more than enough reason. Because Errol Spence was around. You don't go from calling yourself the best welterweight from saying you want to be a legend in the sport. If you can't fight a legend like Floyd Mayweather and beat him, then you got to make your own legacy and do what Floyd Mayweather did. Fight the best throughout your career over a long period of time. Like Terrence Crawford is doing. Like Errol Spence is trying to do. But he goes from saying that. Even saying hey I give a shot to somebody. On the come up. Who used to be like me. I'm that type of a fighter. I'm not a prize fighter. I'm a pride fighter right. He goes from that. To contradicting himself. And now even. Claiming he got injury over an injury. And we don't know if he's coming back to the sport of boxing or not. All because Errol Spence entered the division. Errol said he wanted that fight as bad as he wants to breathe. Him and Keith Thurman. Ever since he was on the come up. Do you know what that means? Try to hold your breath for one minute. How bad do you need to breathe? That's how bad Errol wants that fight. Just try to process this. Errol Spence. He's so good he made Keith Thurman change his life goal about becoming a legendary fighter because if he wanted to do that he had to go through Errol but he didn't want to go through Errol because he saw something in Errol that he didn't like probably he saw himself in Errol Spence his hungry self you know so and he saw that Errol has probably even more talent so why risk it when he's already comfortable he forgot about the high standard goals that he wanted to achieve for himself. All that went through the window when Earl rolled up on him. As soon as Earl started calling him out in 2015 and Floyd Mayweather co-signed it. Believe it or not, Keith Thurman asked for $10 million. I don't know if he was joking or what, but he sounded like he was sincere or sarcastic at the same time. Saying, hey, I ain't fighting that kid unless you overpay me. So he already basically let it be known how he felt about Earl back then. 
so it ain't a coincidence that he disappeared out of the scene due to injuries because Skill recognized Skill and Keith Thurman saw the skill in Errol Spence. Just like Errol sees the skill in Terrence and Terrence sees the same in Errol Spence. And then Errol can't even get another fight with a top 147 pounder because everybody want to fight each other but they don't want to include him in the pot. Even if they're not champions. From Danny Garcia to Sean Porter. However, the winner of that fight has to fight Errol from what I'm hearing. So at the end of the day, they're going to have to go through Errol anyways. So Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford kind of has similar path. However, Terrence been getting the fights he wanted, even though he couldn't get the big, big fights. But something is better than nothing. While Errol Spence been doing the same thing kind of on a lower scale because Terrence been moving up through the weight divisions and that's the advantage that Errol Spence is going to have even though Terrence Crawford is the number one pound for pound but Errol Spence is on the way and he's on the top pound for pound list so at the end of the day if he's just as good as Crawford he have the advantage in the upper hand because at the end of the day he's the bigger man so if the skills are equal then size will make a difference. Terrence Crawford had to be not as good as Errol. He has to be way better than Errol in order to win because Errol is a big fighter. Terrence Crawford is not a small 147 pounder. He's actually, he looked like a natural 147 pounder, but get my point, Errol's a bigger guy at 147. That's his natural weight division. And that's his advantage over Crawford. However, on the other hand, You got Terrence Crawford. He's the number one pound for pound fighter. And he's unseen it all. He's a good body puncher. He's a slick body puncher. He don't get enough credit for his body punching. And Errol, on the other hand, is a good body puncher too. Errol knocks people out with body shots. So does Terrence. Terrence does it more when he counters. And Errol is more of... He create his own offense, but he could counter as well. He just doesn't have to do that right now because he's so good that he don't even have to show that part of his arsenal. And, you know, the sparring rumors aren't aren't just hype because he's doing it in the ring when it counts. Stopping top fighters like Kel Brook, a fighter who was supposed to be at the time the number one Volteway in the division. He beat Sean Porter. He was a top fighter in the division, a big fighter, and Errol Spence stopped him, broke his other orbital bone, and TKO'd him in the 11th round, if I'm not mistaken. After that, he beat Lamar Pearson like he was a bomb, and Lamar, we saw him when he fought Khan, when he fought Danny Garcia. In my opinion, he had a draw with Danny Garcia. Or, I, in my opinion, in my scorecard, he won, but... I could see it as a draw, but at the same time, he beat him like he was a nobody. So Errol Spence has been known for doing this, from sparring the likes of Floyd Mayweather to Sean Porter, Lamont Pearson. He been there, done that, sparring with the Charlos. So Errol Spence is is a problem, and Terrence Crawford is a problem. And that's why we got a big mega fight in our hand. Which is not going to happen next because even though both fighters want to fight each other, willing to fight each other, we already know both fighters fight on different networks and they have other fighters they could fight, which Arrow already said and Terrence Crawford both already been kind of saying we're going to clean our side till we don't got no more cleaning to do, then we're going to fight each other. Arrow looked like he's going to fight the winner of Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter for the Keith Thurman belt. And if Keith Thurman comes back, he could fight Keith Thurman too, which I doubt it. But Terrence Crawford, on the other hand, could clean up his side and fight Benavidez, a guy who been calling him out. And Terrence Crawford told him, you better focus on your fight before you don't make it to your fight. <laughs> so he could fight Benavidez. I feel like that's a good fight for him. And, you know, Benavidez... 
had a tough fight versus Herrera and Terence Crawford ain't no Herrera so you know be careful for what you ask for that's all I got to say so after that happens then we got a mega fight in our hand I feel like in a year most likely if Terence Crawford get the fights he wants and Errol gets the fight he wants and they unify the division and Errol gets all the other belts on his side then we got a mega fight in our hand and probably for the number one spot for Errol and for Terence Crawford to maintain his spot. Now Terence Crawford is fighting on ESPN Plus. I don't know why he's not fighting on ESPN regular like Lomachenko where he could get more views. However, Errol on the other hand fighting on free TV and Showtime. So while both fighters are going through the motion, and basically going through the same thing, getting avoided by the best competition because talent recognize talent. And when you have the most talent, like Errol said, he will probably get offended if all the fighters want to fight him because you will feel like he's easy work. But because he knows he's the truth, that's why all these fighters giving him his respect and they don't want none of that smoke except for these two. So who's going to come up on top? Subscribe below if you want to get smarter by the minute. If you want to get dumb by the second, don't. I listen to these casual ass fans. Now, well, Terrence Crawford actually stay with Bob Arum in top rank, or will he do what Floyd Mayweather did in Oscar De La Hoya and get out of the contract? Or when his contract is over, he move on. We'll see. But even if Terrence still stays with top rank the fight is still possible because Terrence already fought a couple of human fighters so it shouldn't be that impossible to make and if it's a big fight the fans will ask for it and we'll be able to get the match so hopefully it does and we don't get too much on this Peace. Tight, 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 tight. Bring everybody, bring